All right, Programming 11, we're back with another puzzle. This one is going to be the Spikes puzzle. We're going to make something that looks like this. Whoa, what's going on? Craziness. There's a couple things that's going on here. Uh, first of all, you can see that we're accumulating these uh, stacks of ellipses. So we're using a similar sort of truncated ellipse with the size that's half, uh, the height that's half of the width. We checked that out in the Ripples video. Uh, the other thing is we're not clearing. We're not clearing the background. We're just uh, coming out of that out. So for your draw function, you're going to get rid of it. Hey, guess what? Looks like our first tab is almost identical again. But you are going to have to make a spike class. That's going to be the main focus of this object-oriented puzzle. So like the last one, the ripples, I would like you to think about this puzzle and then pause the video. Try to make it yourself. Try for about 10 minutes minimum. If you don't get it, don't worry. The answer is in the rest of this video. But you won't appreciate the answer if you just stop. I mean, if you, just, if you don't stop and you just like keep watching, don't even try it. If you just type out the answer, it's just like going, learning math by copying the answers out of the textbook. You know, you're not really learning much. You got to try, you got to make mistakes, and then you got to find out why those mistakes were mistakes and what was wrong with them and what's the right answer. Without making those mistakes, you don't really you know, learn anything. <laughs> you might have a spikes by the end of it, but you won't have the knowledge to make better, more interesting object-oriented patterns. <clears throat> so, pause that video. Go give it a try. I know you can you know, get somewhere with this. You can at least get the main tab, right? It's almost the same as before. Then you're going to try and figure out what are the numbers that each spike's going to have to remember. And, and really, the pyramid isn't the spike, right? Really, what's going on is this an ellipse. It's really an ellipse. See that it starts off in his ellipse, and they are doing what? What is their action? What's changing from frame to frame? What happens to this ellipse? Very similar to a ripple in many ways, except that it's doing something a little different. And, of course, we have the background... Uh, turned off so we don't clear each frame so we see them stacking on top of each other so you know rewind this a few times figure out what's going on figure out what are their initial positions and also figure out um, you know, what are they doing each frame and how are we drawing them so pause that video and then start it again and you know at least give yourself 10 minutes okay thanks pausing I'm paused okay now we're back hopefully you paused here we are, spikes. So here's the main tab again, almost the same thing, right? Array list of this time spike objects. We have to make our array before we can use it. And then once we've made it, we can make a loop to add a bunch of new spikes to our spike list. I'm doing 100, you could do more or less, your choice. Hey, look, it's almost the same thing, except now it's spikes. It's a loop again. We're going to get each spike at a time and act and show it and go to the next one. Hey, look at that. Our main tab, very similar to previous uh, object-oriented puzzles, right? But here's the one that's a little bit different. This is the class. Again, this is where you're probably going to put a lot of the uniqueness in your pattern. So we have class spike. Here is our instance variables. I'm keeping track of position, uh, speed, and size. Wow, it's just like a ripple and yet so different in terms of the output. My constructor, which has the same name as the class, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you know, we have a random starting position and I have a random size. So everything is just random. And I chose this as my range, but it's not necessarily the only choice. Next, we have the act function. So this is interesting because this is an act function that can eventually stop. That's why we don't see it over and over again. So this act function will act if the size is greater than zero. But the first thing we do is decrease the size by, I guess I didn't use speed, so maybe I should get rid of speed up here. Um, oh well, it doesn't matter too much. The first thing I do is decrease size, so eventually we will get to zero. And when we do, this function doesn't do anything anymore. If size isn't greater than zero, then and then we don't see any more changes because it won't act anymore. But as long as it's greater than zero, we'll shrink and go up. 
And that's why you see the spikes growing. If we went down, we would see the spikes going the other way. Whoa. Upside down spikes. Stalactites. <laughs> well, geo geo uh, geology, I guess. Stalagmites. These are stalagmites. The ones we know are stalactites. The things you learn from Dungeons and Dragons, I tell you. Fantastic. Okay, so here's our act function. Does it make sense why it stops? That if statement is what it's all about. So think about that. The show function is pretty straightforward. I just have stroke that is black. I have a fill this time to make sure that we don't see the back side of it. And here's the ellipse. I'm doing the size divided by two to give it a bit of perspective. If you if you gave it a you know perfect circle, it would look okay still. You know, that actually looks pretty sweet. <laughs> now that I think of it, that's actually better. I kind of like that better. Look at that shading. It looks like it's got like a shadow on the side. But whatever, it doesn't matter too much. You, know, you can uh, experiment with it. Anyways, there's the spikes. Did you have it to have more success this time? Uh, or was this too weird? Was this one a little confusing? Yeah, either way, hopefully it makes sense now. And uh, thanks for giving it a good try. We got through the ripples today and the spikes. So next class, we'll have some new patterns for you to check out. Thank you. Bye-bye.